Hey guys, Hypolust here. I've been trying for over an hour to record to basically no avail. Either my mic is not working or my recording software is glitching up or a combination of both. I suspect it's a combination of both. Uh, anyways, hopefully this video turns out so I have something to post for tonight. I'm getting a new mic tomorrow and I'm going to be switching out my recording software so hopefully we'll be back up and running tomorrow. I had an entire series with Yukiko that I was going to be posting and then the whole thing was super choppy and just completely unusable. So anyways, I got a request to take a look at some of the new cards from the new set. I'm not going to be taking a look at all of them. There are a hundred new cards and to take a look at all of them would be just insane. It would take me probably an hour. So I'm only going to look at some of the ones that I think are really influential. So the first one is Anastasia. I like her schools of magic. She kind of does a similar thing to what Ariana does with the prime and dark magic and also with her ability to put two crippling counters on target creature kind of does what Ariana does as well in that it cares about crippling counters and that's probably the style of deck you're going to be using with her. Uh, her ability is very strong. It's pretty much as strong as killing something with a counter on it. Uh, being able to reduce pretty much anything's attack by two for just two resource is pretty good. That's going to be pretty equivalent to just outright killing most things. Uh, so I think she's going to be seeing a lot of play. The other main hero that I really like is Anton. Unfortunately, his schools of magic aren't too good, but his ability to increase the size of all friendly stacks by one could be crazy in the right scenarios. Imagine if your uh, front line was just four Griffin Legionnaires and your back line was four Griffin Crossbowmen and you activated that. That would be insane. Uh, it's not going to come up very often, but if it ever did, it would be such a blowout. So, anyways, the rest of the heroes are just kind of meh. The new events aren't really anything special. Uh, one thing that I did want to mention, Eternal Disciple. This guy's been getting a lot of attention. They're like, people have been like, oh man, you can kill anything with zero attack, so you put crippling counters on them and then kill it. But if it has zero attack, it's probably not really a threat anyways. I guess for three mana, two, one, six stats is decent, but I don't know. I think this guy's been a little bit overhyped. A uh, similar card, though, that hasn't been overhyped is Eternal Apprentice. So this guy and that Jin that draws cards for pretty much the same condition, the one that, like, whenever they don't attack, they do a thing. These guys are both pretty good. So this guy comes down, does something right away. He puts crippling counters on everything opposing him. Uh, 215 body for 4 isn't crazy, but with the crippling one, it's a little bit better. But I think most of the time you're just going to be moving this guy around, putting crippling counters on everything on your opponent's side, and just controlling the board really well. With the crippling counters and 5 health, he's probably going to survive for quite a while. So, yeah, this guy's going to be really good. I plan on playing him as much as I can. Uh, down a little bit more, we've got, like, Executioner Succubus. Basically a more conditional Banshee with a better body. Uh, so, 326 stats is okay but I mean it kills something with damage on it so if you can hit it with like your regular succubus or a color of the void or whatever really then you're just gonna be able to completely kill it off this is gonna be really nice for in the later game when your opponent plays their six drop which would swing the game or their five drop or whatever then you just play your executioner succubus and kill it off and then you have a three two six creature that they need to deal with so this is going to be good. I think most Inferno decks are going to be playing one or two of these. Uh, Shogun is also very good. I'm probably going to be trying to play four of these in as many decks as I can. His stat requirements, four might and three magic, are really unrestrictive. Uh, very decks are going to be going up to four might and three magic at least anyways. So Shogun just kind of fits in there. And his ability is crazy. It's like a mini geyser, or I guess a magma blast, more like it. Uh, when he first came out, I think there were some people who thought that he just did it to whatever was across from him, and so he was also dealing the two damage to himself, but no, that's anything. Uh, and also it's a May, so you can just cancel out and not have it deal it at all if your opponent doesn't have anything, but most of the time you're just going to be dealing at the very least two damage to something. So yeah, this card's pretty good. Also, Ariana, Chosen of the Void. I plan on playing this card in pretty much every single Prime deck that I play. 
though right now that isn't really anything. I suppose Mother Namtaru, Ariana, that new Necropolis hero that I was just looking at, and maybe Massfar if you want to play like Massfar Titans with an Ariana as the high end. Most of the time when you play sh her, she's going to be like the best card in the deck, basically. She's also a really good target for Time of Need. Unlike most of the unique creatures you're getting out with Time of Need, uh, she actually breaks even on the resource and has a very powerful effect when she first enters the battlefield. Uh, Void Ripple with legs, basically, except she requires less stats, and Void Ripple is 5, right? So for 2 extra mana, you get a 217. That's pretty insane. Uh, so the only other creature I want to take a quick look at is this Arcane Master Jin. I kind of mentioned her when I was looking at the Disciple. Same kind of idea. You're rarely ever going to be attacking with her, I think. Most of the time you'll just be moving her around wherever she's needed. She is a flyer, so she can go front row or front line and play defense, or she can go back line and be defended. And you're pretty much just going to be drawing two cards per turn for every turn she's out, so... That's pretty good. Might not be enough to make Academy an actual real faction, but it's a very strong ef uh, effect. So down to the spells. There's only a couple spells that I think are reasonable. Actually, I think it's just the one spell that I think is reasonable, which is Ice Spear. So there's been some discussion on this card already. Yes, it's very strong. Uh, in Magic, there was a card called Rancor which basically did this except it gave your guy plus two attack and then when Rancor went to the graveyard it went back to your hand instead so this is kind of similar except it returns at the end of uh, your turn that basically just means your opponent's never gonna get a chance to interact with it so as long as you don't like accidentally kill the thing that it's on then you're always gonna have the ice spears pretty much so very strong card it's gonna help make combat go in your favor pretty easily I mean, like, for the most part, you're going to be able to put two or even three or four sometimes on a guy. Basically just get, like, a two, three, or four damage boost out of nowhere, and then do that every single turn. Like, we all know how good Weak of Mercenaries is. Ice Spear is kind of like a Weak of Mercenaries, except you put the damage wherever you want it, and you don't need to roll the card on top of your deck every turn. So, yeah, this, this card's insane. This is probably going to get nerfed at some point, so use it while you can. Uh, moving on, I don't think any of the other spells are very good. Shifting Fates is kind of meh. I mean, you can use it to get two Cloud Shaper Jins back. Other than that, it's... Yeah, it's... I mean, it gets stuff back. So, it's fine if you've got a lot of Prime cards. You can't use it to get Ariana back. Because she gets banished when she dies. Uh, Scarification. This is the other really big card that I wanted to look at. Deals 5 damage to your hero, and then you draw 5 cards. So 5 damage is quite a bit of damage, but 5 cards is quite a bit of cards. So I'll probably be playing at least 2 of these in pretty much every single Inferno deck that I play. The fact that it only costs 3 resource means that you're going to be able to refill your hand with it, and then also play a whole bunch of the cards that you drew most likely in the same turn. So imagine playing like Scarification on 6 resource, and then following it up with like a pair of lava spawns and a maniac or something like that's crazy for six resource and then you've still got two extra cards from the scarification left over i don't really mind taking five damage for that uh looking at the buildings most of them are pretty lackluster i'm a big i'm a big fan of this chapel of elrath because you can play it underneath of a crusader watchman or whatever and then play a light creature every single turn heal it up I mean, a lot of the Haven creatures have high health already, so if you put this down underneath of them and then just give them health every single turn, they can kind of go on defense duty, and you're going to be getting a lot of value out of this in the right circumstances. It's not always going to be good, because it does require that you have some amount of board control as well, plus a light creature to play every single turn. So, we'll see, but it has some potential. The other card with potential was... Mercenary Hill Fort, because double attack is very strong, and I haven't taken a look at what mercenaries could abuse this, but this is an interesting card in that now, if they ever print a good mercenary, then this is going to be insane and open. So it's kind of neat to just keep stuff like that in mind when they print a card like this that seems narrow. It just means that if they ever print anything to make it good, then it becomes very good. Uh, the rest of the cards, I think, 
were pretty mediocre. Haven got a couple good buffs, like Blessing Inquisitor, which his name is pretty awkward to say. It should be Blessed Inquisitor in my in my mind. Uh, yeah, this guy's pretty good, especially since they're putting more of a focus on Haven creatures being light as well. So he's kind of just an honor one to most of your guys. Not full honor, but pretty close. And two, three, seven stats for four mana is already like decent. Compare him to like Oliphant or something. And yeah, the extra attack on your light guys around him is just gravy basically. Especially if you can have like three guys set up and then slam him in the middle and get three bonus damage the turn he enters. This guy's pretty good and pretty tough to kill. Uh, and then. Wolf Priest as well. Light creature, so he gets the damage bonus. Gives your like, er, not even light guys, just all humans, uh, one extra retaliation, and he has preemptive strike himself. So he really reminds me of like a greater light elemental in that, like the three retaliation preemptive strike, except he also has another relevant ability, and he has six health, so he's pretty strong. So yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on the set. The cards that I didn't look at, I just think are pretty mediocre. Some of them are going to find spots in decks. Others of them, you just look at them, they're kind of like, eh, it's pretty pretty awkward. Like, Mother Harpy's fine, but she's nothing special. So, if you guys disagree with anything I said, feel free to leave a comment. If you have thoughts on some of the cards that I didn't look at and you think deserve mention, please leave a comment as well. I'm happy to start a discussion about some of this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.